Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Is your client here? Um, I, I'll step out and check. No, Your Honor. What? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way down. I mean, we done with everything except this jury trial. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes. Just check the hallway. He has not showed up so far. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Mr. Smith, turn on your camera. What did you say, Ms. Rudder? I was I was trying to get my message up. I had the uh, case number for you. Or just oh. okay, go ahead and um, wait a minute. All right, go ahead and call the case number. My trial was yesterday, sir. Can you be quiet? I, I already told Ms. Stevenson to tell you that I wasn't going to do that with you. Now, if you're going to try to run my courtroom, then I need you to go to law school and get either elected or appointed to the bench. But if I'm going to run my courtroom, I am going to run my courtroom. And I know everything that's going on in my courtroom. And I don't need your assistance. Ms. Rudder, call the case. Calling case 220-443-6401, the people of the state of Michigan versus Darrell Smith. And what is he accused of? The defendant is charged with malicious destruction of property, less than $200. And when was it on the court's docket for? It was on the court's docket for June 27th for a jury trial. Thank you. Appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter, on, <clears throat> Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Mr. Darrell Smith. Mr. Smith, sir, please unmute and just tell the judge your full name. Darrell Donnell Smith, my paperwork had trial for the... You gonna keep it up and let me tell you what's gonna happen. That $10,000 cash surety bond with the house arrest, I'm going to um, keep it in place. You're gonna keep it up. You're gonna keep it up. But let me help you with something, Mr. Smith. You're going to go low and I'm going to go lower. You're going to keep it up. You're going to keep acting like I'm dumb. Because I'm not. Ms. Stevenson, how are we proceeding today? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we, first of all, thank the court very much for allowing Mr. Smith um, to be a walk-in today. We thank the court for allowing him to appear without having um, to post the bond, which was ordered on June 27th. Um, I am asking the court, first of all, to set aside the KPS, which I believe the court did issue on June 27th for Mr. Smith's failure to appear. And I'm asking that the matter be rescheduled for a final pretrial conference. The court is gonna set aside the KPS and recall the warrant. I'm not gonna set a final pretrial conference, but it is my understanding that the, despite the fact that I, on this record, gave the date for the jury trial, despite the fact that the jury trial for this case has been set I don't know for how many months. I, I don't know how many months it's been set for. The clerk in his, in his entry put the wrong date in the system. And so instead of paying attention to what I said on the record, because he had the stank attitude the last time he was in court and he hurried up and clicked off and he was probably turning his head like he's doing now. And he probably wasn't paying attention to nothing that the court said. Um, and so that's how he wasn't able to hear the actual date of the jury trial, the date of the jury trial that everybody showed up for except Mr. Smith. 
the date that I showed up, the date that counsel showed up, the date that the prosecutor showed up, the date that all three of the witnesses showed up to, the date that all of the jurors showed up to. Everybody showed up on the date that had been set for months, except Mr. Smith, who indicated to you, according to you, that he looked in the court system, saw on the register of action that it was set for June 28th, which the court will admit was a mistake by Mr. Flanagan, who just had his, his own fraternity leave, and I'm so excited for him. But Mr. Flanagan mistakenly put the date in as June 28th, which is why this court, who's been practicing law for 30 years, been on the bench for 16, know her job so well she could do it in her sleep. That's why I don't go by a register of action. That's why every time we come into this courtroom, I say that the register of action is not an official record. Why? Because the clerk can make a mistake because the clerk can type anything they want to type in that register of action. I don't type in the register of action. The clerk types in the register of action and they could put any information they want to put in that register of action, which is why the register of action is simply a guide. It's something that you look at. And then when the register of action conflicts with the official record that Ms. Projetsky is taking. Ms. Projetsky, just take this opportunity for me and for my benefit to turn on your camera so we can see that there is a court reporter who is taking the official record. Right, Ms. Projetsky, the official record taker is on the court. And she would have said, if anybody had asked her the official record, Oh, no, the jury trial is on June 27th. Okay, so since the jury trial, which was set on June 27th, and everyone appeared ready to proceed, did not go, I am going to set the matter for another jury trial. I'm not going to set it for a final pretrial. There's no need for a final pretrial conference. But, Ms. Stevenson, I believe you have a motion. Yes, Your Honor. The The primary reason for my request for a final pretrial conference is is the fact that Mr. Smith and I, Your Honor, unfortunately, are just not able to work together. Um, I do believe, Your Honor, there has been a severe breakdown in the attorney-client relationship, Your I Honor, which I, which I would argue would, in, would interfere with my ability to zealously represent Mr. Smith the way that my oath requires me to, Your Honor. Um, I don't, there's only maybe about five times in my career have I asked to be replaced um, because of the relationship that I'm having with my client. Um, I have clients that are just, you know, at, at each end of the spectrum with regard to being easy to work with. Some of them are really, really, really easy to work with. Some of them are very, very, very challenging to work with. But, you know, I do the best that I can. Mr. Smith, I, despite what he's indicated this morning, I don't believe that he has confidence in my intellectual ability to represent him as an attorney, Your Honor. Mr. Smith, um, I'm almost 60 years old, and for the first time, somebody called me slow. Um, that's, that's what Mr. Smith said to me. Um, despite my efforts to try to get him into court back in here today after the court's order um, with regard to the KBS, we just had a very difficult time, or I, maybe he didn't. But I had a really difficult time just trying to help him even yesterday. Um, so I, for Mr. Smith, it is in his best legal interest, I would argue, that someone other than myself and my partners with misdemeanor and felony defenders be appointed to represent Mr. Smith. We do um, collaborate on our cases. I've had conversations with my partners and with, with our supervisor with regard to this case, Your Honor, and I'm asking that uh, that that Mr. Smith be given a, a different lawyer, somebody who'll be able to work with him, Judge. Mr. Smith, did you have something to say in response to Ms. R Ms. Stevenson's request to be removed from your case? I, I can't hear you, Mr. Smith. You're not muted, but I can't hear you. You're not muted, but 
I don't know what happened with your device, but you're not muted. You're not muted, but we can't hear you. That's what I'm saying. Can't hear you, still can't hear you. Did you disconnect your the volume? Did you? Okay, so maybe you need to log off and log back in. There's something wrong with your with your audio. We we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Un we can I'm trying now. How about now? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear so, you. Now. now, in regards to the email, it came at 11.53. When I checked the register of actions, the court date had set it for 6.28. I had an interview with Amazon and training to start. So I was actually happy to see the 28th in there So because it went along with that uh that interview schedule. So it's an email on the 27th came real late, and it sent me into a panic. And I was like real nervous there, but I had to go back to the register of actions and I had sent a text message to her. And like, it was just that part. Here's, of my, here's my question, Mr. Smith. Miss um, Stevenson has requested to be removed from your case. And I'm asking you, do you have any response to her request to be removed from your case? Um, I'd, I'd rather she stay. I don't want this process to take any longer than it has. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a real difficult time with this. Okay, so you called her stupid, basically. No, no, the email no, came no, at no. 11:53. No, no, no. You, you said you. She said you called her slow. I mean, if the email would have came at nine o'clock in the morning, then I would have called her fast. Really? That's how you. That's how you want us to interpret that. Please do. Well, we don't. Because let me tell you what occurred yesterday. Uh, yesterday on June 28th, I was informed that Mr. Smith had misunderstood and that he showed up for his trial date a day late. I said, okay, um, uh, he, I don't know why he checked the register of action instead of calling the courtroom when the register of action said something clearly different than what the judge said, seems to me like an individual would immediately call their lawyer or call the courtroom or call and say, hey, the judge said the 27th, but I'm looking in here and it say the 28th. And then before we could even address the issue yesterday, I was informed by security that Mr. Durrell Smith had been removed from the building because he was um, acting out in the hallway. I have video. I don't, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Um, I was informed that Mr. Smith was removed from the building because he was being unruly in the hallway. And then I informed Ms. Stevenson, Ms. Stevenson, your client has been removed from the building. So you're not going to be able to speak with your client because he has been removed from the building by security. And then Miss Stevenson was texting me and stuff and begging me and stuff because she is a phenomenal lawyer. She was telling me, Judge, please can Mr. Smith come in tomorrow? Can he come in tomorrow? And then I sent her a text back. And I don't know if she forwarded you my text, but I said, she said something about, Judge, it was an honest mistake that he made. Um, and I said, no, it wasn't. I said, it wasn't an honest mistake. I said, I told him on more than one occasion, the date for this jury trial. That last final pretrial was just a last final pretrial confirming what we already knew that the jury trial was gonna be set for June 27th. But I remember when you logged off on that day of the last final pretrial and I said, if he don't change his attitude, this is gonna be a difficult jury trial because that was a short little routine hearing, yet your attitude sucked. I mean, you come on here as if I have 
accused you of maliciously destroying some property at the jail. You come on here like you just mad at the world, like you, and, and since we included in the world, you mad at us too. Your attitude, it just sucks. And I have, as long as I have been a judge, from the very beginning of my career, I, rem I at, well, I should say at some point early in my career, Ms. Stevenson began appearing before me. And I can say with the certainty that to, in front of me, I believe this is only her second request to be removed from a case. Even when she has had clients that I've had to threaten to put in jail, that I've actually put in jail for their stank attitudes, and Ms. Stevenson has not given up the fight. And she's always amenable to continuing on with a difficult client. But when she says that not only is the client difficult, but he's abusive in his manner in which he speaks, that you have used profanity in the way and manner that you speak, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It is absolutely unacceptable. And since she wants to maintain her license, she apparently didn't curse back at you. But I, I might not have been that kind of lawyer. Because when you go low, and I love Michelle Obama. I respect her with the utmost respect. But if you go low, I'm going lower. I'm going to show you how deep I can dig down into the gravel. So I want you to stop. I want you to stop with this behavior. You have been accused of something. You are innocent until proven guilty. There are individuals that are trying to protect your constitutional rights and are trying to, to uh, protect and make sure that the people, if they are going to accuse you of this thing, that they have the evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury that you have done this thing. But if you're going to call the people slow, curse the people, make it difficult for them to represent you, we, we, we're all wasting our time. We're all wasting our time. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to, I am not going to tolerate it. Now, I'm going to grant Ms. Stevenson's request to withdraw from this case. Ms. Rudder, we are going to call, um, or I'm sorry, send an email to Ruth Carter. And we are going to get counsel appointed to Mr. Smith. Yes, ma'am. And then I will set a final pretrial conference, but I'm also going to set a jury trial date because notwithstanding the fact that I believe that it was irresponsible of Mr. Smith to look at the register of action and then decide, oh, since they say the 28th in here, even though the judge said the 27th clearly out of her mouth more than once at the last court date, I'm going to go with the 28th. That suggests that Mr. Flanagan and any clerk could at any time change the court dates that I have set. That's what that suggests. That if I say we're going to come on Monday, the clerk can decide, no, we're going to come on Friday. Well, we know that that is not going to happen. That's what we know. We know that that's not going to happen. When I set a date, I set a date. And if you find something that conflicts with the date that I set, then you call the court. Then you call the lawyer. 
So I'm going to set a new date for a final pretrial conference. And then, Ms. Ritter, I need for you um, to see if your witnesses are going to be available because I am going to bump a, 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 I am going, that was on, that was on uh, June 21st that I confirmed that the trial was June 27th, just for this record. On June 21st, I confirmed that the trial was on June 27th. So the week before, I specifically said that the trial is on June 27th. Okay, I'm gonna set the final pretrial conference uh, for next Wednesday, July the 5th. So I need for, um, Ms. Carter to, to assign counsel to Mr. Smith so that I can then hurry up and select another jury trial date for Mr. Smith. And that means I am going to bump a jury trial that's already um, scheduled. So we need to maybe see one of the ones that might, you know, be the a best choice to bump. So I'm going to bump a case. Final pretrial will be at nine o'clock on July 5th. I'm sorry, put that at nine. What is what's my what's my um 902? That wait, no, 902 is in person. 901, put it at 901. That that says that I'm appointing counsel. So counsel to be. Appointed. Ms. Stevenson, please prepare an order for the court withdrawing the misdemeanor and felony defender's office from the case. I'll do that now, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right. Is there anything further with respect to this matter on behalf no. of the people? Not from the people, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Smith, anything further? No. All no. right. I will see you on July the 5th. At nine o'clock, we'll have new counsel appointed for you. Have a great day and stay safe.